Okay, hello Cloud Gurus and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture we're going to talk about EFS or Elastic File System and we're going to actually do a lab. Now a word of warning, EFS is still in preview and it's not yet in the exam to my knowledge. However, it's a very important topic and I think you should at least understand it and how it works uh, before taking the exam so you can see the way things are going to move in the future. So what is EFS? Well EFS is Amazon's Elastic File System and it's a file storage service for Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud or EC2 as it's called. Um, so Amazon EFS is easy to use and provides a simple interface that allows you to create and configure file systems quickly and easily. With Amazon EFS, storage capacity is elastic, growing and shrinking automatically as you add and remove files. So your applications have the storage that they need when they need it. So if you think back to um, some of our other labs where we had EC2 instances and we were attaching additional volumes to those EC2 instances, what we had to go in and do is pre-provision those EBS volumes. We had to go in and say, okay, I want an EBS volume of, um, you know, SSD storage that's eight gigs in size. We go and, you know, provision that EBS volume, and then we would attach it to that EC2 instance. We would then have to mount that to a particular directory, etc. So it's great and that works, but at the same time, you can't mount an EBS volume to two EC2 instances at once. And that's what EFS allows you to do. Now, EFS is still in preview. Uh, I do have an account that has uh, enabled access to EFS and it's only available in Oregon currently. I was quickly just go through the features of EFS. So it supports the NFS version 4, NFS v4 protocol, and you only pay for the storage that you use. There's no pre-provisioning required. So it's not, not like EBS where we have to uh, spin up an eight gig uh, volume. We actually just start putting files on it and we're charged 30 cents per gig um, in terms of storage costs and that's it. It can scale up to the petabytes and it can support thousands of concurrent NFS connections at once. And the data is stored across multiple availability zones within a region. Now, again, we don't actually get a durability uh, rating from Amazon, um, to my knowledge, at least to what I could research, um, but that's because it is quite new. So it's not gonna be like um, S3, um, you know, where we get the 11.9's durability just yet. Um, but hopefully as they develop it, we will get a definite uh, durability rating. Now, the cool thing about EFS compared to S3 is EFS is block-based storage as opposed to object-based storage. So, you know, we can um, put files in there and we can actually share them with other EC2 instances. And we'll go through how we do that in this lab. And so EFS is very similar to S3 in that you get read after write consistency. But again, I will say it again, EFS is block-based storage, not object-based storage. Okay, so uh, in order to do this, I'm going to go over to the Amazon console. You may just have to watch the video until this comes out of preview release. Uh, you may not be able to do this yourself. But the other thing you can do is try and sign up to the preview. Um, you'd be surprised. I signed up to it and it was made available to me within a couple of days. So if you do get the time, go ahead and try it. Okay, so I've logged into the AWS console and you can see here that I'm in Ireland. And we go across here and click on Elastic File System. Now, uh, of course, this region is unsupported. It is only supported out of the US West Oregon region. And here's the splash screen. So we go in and we hit create file system. Now, again, if you haven't signed up to the preview, you won't see that. It will tell you to um, you know, uh, sign up to the preview. Um, so I've gone in and here's my lovely splash screen. And basically I have to create out mount targets. Well, first of all, I have to select my VPC. I'm just going to use my default VPC for this region. I then have to create mount targets and I can actually choose which availability zones I want to have mount targets in. And I'm just going to click on all three availability zones. And then we then choose our subnets. Um, so this is uh, if we were using our um, you know, custom VPC, we might have different subnets. Uh, but these subnets are the default subnets for each availability zone. Our IP addresses, we can actually go in there and um, predetermine our IP address. Um, but if we just leave it blank, uh, it is going to automatically uh, allocate us an IP address. And then these are the security groups. You'll see it's the same security group and it's the default security group for this VPC. Okay, so here is where we go in and add our tag. So I'm going to call this my EFS file system. And you can see I've already typed it in before. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. Then we just review the information. So essentially we are putting it within this VPC, within these three availability zones. We're assigning it an automatic IP address and it's gonna be assigned to, these, uh, to this security group. 
and then we go ahead and hit create file system and it's literally that simple. So what I'm going to go and do now while this is uh, being created is I'm going to go in and provision um, three EC2 instances and I'm going to put them in um, different availability zones. So I'm going to go across to EC2 and I'm going to provision, I might actually just provision two um, EC2 instances to keep this uh, video quite quick. So go in and do our Linux AMI, going to use a T2 micro. I'm uh, just going to use all the standard settings except I'm going to choose my availability group, uh, availability zone. So I'm going to go into US West 2A, I'm going to go ahead and hit next, add my storage and we're going to call this US West 2A. I'm going to go ahead and hit my security groups and the security group I'm going to use is one that I've spun up uh, earlier, so my web DMZ. I'm going to go ahead and hit review and launch, review and launch and using that private key and then I am going to uh, go back and view my instance and launch my second instance and again we're going to go through all this again quick quick quick. Um, so we want uh, the subnet is going to be uh, 2B this time go ahead and hit next, next, and I'm going to call this US West 2B and hit next and I'm going to use my pre-existing security group uh, which is my web DMZ hit review and launch and again I'm going to launch it using this key pair that I've uh, set up earlier. Okay so now that that's done I'm also just going to uh, go in and provision a, a load balancer you'll see why in a second so we'll create this load balancer um, we'll just call it uh, my production LB and we're going to create it, create it within the uh, default uh, VPC and we're just going to let it uh, have port 80 and I'm going to put it in the same security group and hit next and uh, hit next and we're going to configure a health check and it'll just be our standard health check except I'll change the healthy threshold to 3 and the health check interval down to 10 seconds just so that it comes online very quickly and then I'm going to add in both my EC2 instances now of course this uh, is going to fail the health check until I actually go in and start um, you know installing that index.html file uh, and just going to hit review and create so there we go we've got the elastic load balancer created we've got two EC2 instances that are online if we come back here we should be able to see our uh, elastic file system should hopefully be ready and yep yeah, it's available in all three uh, availability zones so here we go now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to note down the public IP addresses of my two instances and I'm going to log into them now I've been playing around with this a bit in the video um, you know just making sure everything works before I record um, so you can see a lot of different terminated instances here uh, but here are my two instances and before we do this though there's one important point we need to make sure that these instances are within the same security group as the EFS uh, mount point that we just created so we need to go in and go to actions we need to go over to networking and go to change security groups and we want to make sure that it's um, these EC2 instances are also within the default VPC security group so I'm going to do that for US West 2A and for US West 2B do exactly the same thing go ahead and change the security groups and so there we go assign security groups so there we go our um, two EC2 instances are within separate availability zones they're behind an ELB um, they are both now running and they are in the same security group as our um, EFS uh, volume as our e and if we just go check on EFS you can see uh, what security group it's in uh, just by reading here so uh, it's the default security group so if I uh, now go back to EC2, I'm going to make a note of the two public IP addresses and we're going to run um, two different terminal windows and they're going to be different colors um, so you can see which one. I think US uh, West 2A will make blue and US West 2B will make green. So I'm just going to pause the video as I get the uh, terminal windows set up. Okay, so I've logged into two different terminal windows. The blue is uh, US West 2A and this the green is West uh, US West 2B. And so I'm just going to go ahead and log into both instances. So go ahead and hit yes. And that's connecting in now. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and type in yes. And that's also connected in. So I'm going to raise my uh, privileges to root. And I'm going to clear the screen. Do the same here. Raise my privileges to root. 
and then clear the screen. First thing I'm going to go in and do on both of these instances is install Apache. So yum install httpd minus yes. And the same goes here. Yum install httpd minus yes. So we've installed Apache on both. Uh, the next thing I'm going to go do is start the Apache service on both. So service httpd start. And then on the other ones, service httpd uh, start. And there we go. And so we started on both. And so now when we've done this, it's basically created the var. If we go across here, it's created the var www.html or forward slash HTML. And you can see there's nothing in there. So I'm going to go and clear the screen. I'm going to go back to the root. And here I'm going to uh, do the same thing, clear the screen and go to the root directory. Whoops, there we go. So the next thing we need to do, if we go back over to um, EFS. So what we need to now do is go over to EFS, we click on it here. It's really, really simple. We click in here and you'll see file system access EC2 mount instructions and you can click in here. Now, because we're using a, a Amazon Linux AMI, we don't actually need to go in and do any of this. We don't need to install anything. It's already pre-installed for us. All we need to do is run this command to mount our instances but this is going to mount it to the EFS directory and we want to mount it to our var www.html. So I'm going to go back to my terminal window. I'm going to paste this command in here and I'm just going to change it so that it goes to var www.html and hit enter. And I'm going to do the same for this one here. Go to forward slash var forward slash www forward slash html. Now, What's really cool is if we now go to our var www.html, this is mounted on um, EFS and we can start creating files. So go nano index.html, which is what our elastic load balancer is now looking for for its health check. I'm going to call it, um, just type in hello cloud gurus. This is my new home page. And I'm going to save this hit yes and hit enter. Now if all has worked, we can go back over here and if we go to our uh, var www.html and do an ls, and if we, you can see there's now the index.html. If we actually go in and have a look at what uh, the data is in there, it will hopefully, or well, obviously, is going to be the same as what we just saved. So it's the same file uh, and it's Basically, we've now just got one copy of our code, but we've got two web servers uh, serving up this content. And I'm going to now go back across here. I'm going to go over to my Elastic Load Balancer. And with any luck, this will now be in service. So if we come back over here, go to our uh, Load Balancer and go over to our instances. And there we go, it's now passing the health check, it's finding index.html, and if we browse to the actual uh, DNS name, I'll click on uh, the description, and go to the DNS name of the load balancer, it's going to load that file that we just created. So I'll go up here, go enter, and there we go, hello Cloud Gurus, this is my new homepage. So you can see how amazing EFS is going to be when it finally comes out. It means that essentially you can have your code all in one uh, container, or all in one file system, and then mount it across multiple different EC2 volumes. You don't have to mess around with um, moving things in and out of S3 with auto scaling groups. You could just change your bash script to mount um, your, you know, the root directory of Apache to this EFS mount point. And, you know, EFS uh, supports at the moment, you know, thousands of different mount points. So um, you could have thousands of different web servers all serving the same code. Um, you know, from that uh, that particular file system. So it's it's going to be a really powerful thing. Like I said, though, guys, it's such a new product that it's not yet on the exam. And because um, it's using NFS4, um, even uh, some versions of Windows, Windows 2008 and um, 2012, to my knowledge, don't have uh, or have trouble supporting it. So it is very new, um, but you can see where things are going. It's a great central repository to serve all your code. And it doesn't just have to be web servers. It could be file servers. It could be anything, you know, it's a fantastic product that AWS have come out with. Okay, that's it for this lecture, Cloud Gurus. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, feel free to move on to the next lecture. Thank you.